Hey Dave, uh, are you doing? Uh, welcome. Um, Not too bad. Today I'm going to uh, interview you. Right. Yeah. Let me first uh, introduce a little bit myself. I'm Luca, Italian, uh, Chief Architect at Talos Digital. And Dave, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I'm Dave. Uh, I do a bunch of different things. Uh, author of uh, Node Cookbook, uh, the certifications, uh, do consultancy, different things like that. And um, as you know, you and I have worked together on various projects at various times doing various things. Our lives, they were walking on the same path for some time. But I think it would be interesting to talk about the certification, right? We have been uh, both involved. Uh, we are both strong believers. And um, maybe tell us a little bit the history around the certification, where it started uh, and walk us through it. Yeah, so in um, 2016, uh, it was, we were in Austin. Uh, a bunch of people uh, from uh, different parts of the industry got together. Uh, the uh, Linux Foundation sort of orchestrated that, uh, put us in a room with a psychometrician. Uh, we all gave a couple of days to do it. And we came up with uh, the, the, the themes, the topics, the domains, and the, and the sort of tasks we would expect someone who is you know, proficient with Node at an intermediate to upper intermediate level uh, to, to be able to do. Uh, from there, it was a, a fairly a fairly long road, stopping and starting and different things. But eventually, we we ended up in a place where uh, we uh, were able to release two um, uh, Node JS certifications. Oh, two certifications. That's kind of interesting, right? Maybe you yeah. Can, well, you can tell us something about the two certifications and how they differ yeah. and what kind of target audience we are targeting. Well, the story behind it is interesting because we only set out to do one. Um, but by the end of it, we had a five hour exam, which we felt was too long, uh, especially since the exam is actually, uh, taken remotely, um, using a, a desktop, uh, VM. Um, so what we did was we, we, we had to tear down some crush, like pare down some of the questions. Um, uh, and it was still too long. And so, uh, we decided to split it up into, uh, two discrete pieces, one that focused on servers, services and security, and the other that focused on uh, general overall competence uh, that would that would translate pretty much to any any kind of uh, Node.js users usage. So the, the first one is called the uh, Node services developer. Um, and the second one is called the node application developer. Ideally, you want to be able to be qualified with both to show all, all around proficiency. Um, but one, one is for your, your general competence. The other one is for uh, specifically uh, validating uh, your ability to build services, which is often, often a, a thing that you need to do uh, in startups and enterprises alike, really. And uh, if you... If you think about the process, right? So you are you, uh, the certification tries to target uh, a kind of uh, a broad spectrum, right, of uh, developers. Yeah. So if you were to kind of uh, uh, suggest uh, something for a more junior audience or a more kind of intermediate and senior audience, how do you see the progression of these two exams kind of uh, uh, following to these two buckets? Yeah, so it, it kind of depends on context as, as always. But, um, you know, if you if you're if you're at, at a junior level and wanting to reach an upper intermediate level, or if you're at an intermediate level and wanting to validate that you're, you know, on your way to senior, um, in both cases, the general case would be to say, go for the application developer certification first, because that's your, your basis and your foundation, and then do the services developer but really just to prove uh, that, that those skills can uh, can sort of aggregate into a specific uh, a specific thing that to do, which is to build services, and also to to show that you have a, a good uh, grasp of uh, you know uh, service server side security things like that. Um, so the other scenario might be that if you're uh, under pressure 
uh, to to uh, transition career or whatever it is, then you might want to take the services one first to show that that on a practical level you have those practical skills, and then kind of fill in the uh, the essentially the application developer is about filling in any knowledge gaps in in your Node.js sort of programming abilities. Yeah, and that's a very interesting uh, uh, you know. Uh, context because if you look at usually how in enterprise uh, uh, you know developers are classified between quotes or they are identified within the organization uh, it's very interesting how the certifications tries to unify uh, this common knowledge and common understanding of different kind of capabilities uh, um, and uh, you know I, I, you mentioned earlier on that uh, part of your career has been spent in being uh, author and a writer and so it's kind of interesting to maybe get your perspective on what people can uh, can consume uh, as some sort of uh, uh, material to get ready and get prepared and get onboarded into this certification I mean what would be your main recommendation right for people that would love to uh, start this journey of getting uh, certified yeah uh, really amazing question so there's several layers to this um the first one is you can go to the openjs website and there's um there's a thing called the tips document uh and in there there's resources which include saying like the node.js documentation uh node cookbook uh the third edition um and a, a couple of other books are listed as well i forget what they are um and that that's part of it that you could do uh, for something more uh, official and structured uh, the Linux Foundation uh, offer uh, certification training uh, which is uh, like a, on a self-help self-learning platform uh, which is for the uh, currently for the node application developer certification the services developer certification is still in the works because I'm still working on it um, so, uh, that should be out fairly soon as well within about a month and a half, I'd say. Um, and, uh, those, th those are for your sort of structured learning, uh, for if you, if you're just looking to do it for yourself for larger organizations, uh, that are looking to have like use an initiative of training. Um, I am, uh, working on, uh, putting together workshops that can be delivered um remotely because of where we are um so any organizations that are looking to invest in uh in in skilling up people and and verifying their uh their skill levels with node.js um you know i guess talk to me on twitter uh we're, we're at the beginning of the road with this but we're looking at, at doing something uh very interesting uh in terms of remote training delivery and in terms of uh the certification uh, moving forward it's a, it's very interesting you know because you mentioned uh, uh, the current uh, global situation right and now where we are mm. especially uh, how the tech industry is also adapting and so the the all learning uh, platforms that are adapting to this new uh, moment in time and I, I would love actually to get a little bit of your uh, maybe in that perspective on uh, uh, where do you see uh, these different channels uh, to uh, train uh, people or, you know, to get either self-trained or to be trained by, you know, uh, yourself or, you know, different channels of training? Yeah. Where do you, th do you see this uh, uh, going, especially if you start to contextualize on broader scopes like enterprise? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, this is a, you know, a, a huge uh, area right now as well because um, there there's the cap travel capabilities just aren't there um, but there's something about in-person training um, that watching videos doesn't really meet um, because there's a lot of there's a lot that goes on when you're doing physical uh, training um, <laughs> when I say physical training I mean physical on-site training not not not, not gym training um, because you, you, the trainer, the trainer reads the room and they can see who's struggling. They can see who's getting ahead. They can pair people together. There's all sorts of things that can happen when you're there. Not only that in the breaks on the lunch, you'll often have people with specific problems 
that uh, on the projects that they're working on uh, that that don't necessarily uh, that, that somehow tie in with what you're you're talking about, but uh, they, they you know you can have contextualized conversations with them. So there's all of these value adds that aren't really thought about, um, but you definitely feel a missing if you try to do just a, an online workshop uh, like just all video, for instance. Um, th then you've got, you know, what, what are the options? Like if you're not doing physical training, um, well, you could do the self-help thing. You could do the self-learning on a platform. Um, that's for, that's, that works for a certain type of person. Uh, someone who, who gets along like myself personally, I would probably do well with the self, the self-help, uh, model, but not everyone does. And also it kind of depends where you are in your development uh, in terms of your skills and everything as, as to whether uh, you can you 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 can actually do that um, you, you you might need some help to accelerate uh, or filling knowledge gaps that that uh, self-help can't really can't really cater to everything for everyone whereas a, a, a an experienced trainer can do that um, and so uh, you know as as you know you know I, Luca I've been thinking a lot about how would we do how could we deliver training and get as many of the the on-site benefits as we had before plus benefits of of doing it online for instance being able to retain the recordings um uh you know putting all of that together into a package that can be delivered um and i think you know that that in itself is a very valuable proposition um, and we are working on a model uh, for that, and we are working on a model for that for enterprise, um, and to see how that can be, that can sort of uh, you you know accelerate the capabilities uh, of, of enterprise teams. Yeah, and um, I, I, sorry, I, I think I think you you said something that it can be very interesting for everyone watching uh, this. Uh, you know, fireside chat, or as we call it, our usual chit chat, is um, is, is the value proposition that the certification is bringing back to the enterprise, right? So there is a lot of value, not only from uh, a knowledge uh, and kind of know-how and validation standpoint, but especially like you just touched the mm. the social aspect of this transformation, right? So the fact that uh, mm. you know we we are kind of uh, uh, the whole kind of model that is now remote will it enable actually yeah. organizations to also transform the way they think. And I think, you know, uh, yeah. as you said, the, the certification is a great channel for this transformation, right? How do you see? Oh, it, it, it's, it's a key piece, I think. And and like, you know, you know we, we, need a, we need an optimization to validate, you know, the individual people's skills. Um, that that's fair as well. That doesn't that doesn't uh, rely on you know heuristics like the fact, for instance, that that I have a British accent, British accent, and I'm white. It gives me an advantage that shouldn't really be an advantage. We should be measuring based on whether people have those skills or don't, and whether they can attain those skills or not. Um, and so you know in terms of enterprise efficiency and uh hiring methodologies and all of that kind of stuff uh all of this ties in but definitely it's very interesting uh, on on the on the enterprise side in this current scenario uh and and, and i know you, you know you you yourself working for tellers um you, you you if i can turn the question on the interviewer um you yourself have seen I expect uh, significant adaptations uh, as a result of this. Do you see? Do you see a future where uh, we 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 stay adapted, or do you see a future where eventually it all returns back? I I, I think uh, I I see uh, probably one of the biggest opportunities for transformation uh, right now happening, especially in that all kind of uh, social interaction and people's kind of, I don't want to call it evaluation, but how to correctly measure uh, against uh, uh, the requirements that the organization has, right? So if you think uh, 
what I really love about the certification and I think is uh, accelerating on one side is the fact that there is no um, the, every single candidate at the moment of the in, of the exam are all equal. There is no distinction, right? It's just a challenge between you and yourself, and that's what I really like mm -hmm. uh, about this certification. It, it's just that it comes uh, across in a very democratic way and a very equal way. And on the other side, it brings back. Uh, uh, extreme value to enterprises because uh, the, I think the content like you were describing is very in aligned with where major organizations are going. But And the, the other thing is that different organizations make different decisions in terms of technologies that they use. And even if an organization is using Node, they don't necessarily use the same framework. So we also were focused on the importance of having uh, an exam for the certification that's agnostic to uh, these criteria. So uh, oftentimes, you know, you, 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 uh, certifications can have a bad reputation for being too subject specific. Um, what we do is we focus on the problem solving aspects, not on on specific patterns or specific frameworks or specific libraries or or just using new co Node Core or just using libraries. It's it's more. Uh, it's more about here's a problem can you solve it which is what it should be about and it's what again i i, I think enterprise would be looking for 100 percent uh 100 and that's uh, uh i think the greatest value of the of both certifications right um and uh, i would love actually to um continue a little bit on this uh, enterprise trend because i think it's pretty interesting mm. Um, and uh, you kind of uh, uh, touch a little bit on the, the scope uh, of the certification earlier on, on the two different programs. Uh, um, it would actually be very interesting to get your perspective on how you see the day-to-day -day work in uh, enterprise on large-scale organization be um, impacted on one side and be... Uh, um, kind of the driver for many developers to, uh, you know, uh, take the certification exam. Mm. Um, so, sorry, say the question again. Oh, yeah. I meant uh, I would love to get your perspective on uh, on one side, how the organization can be positively, positively impacted by uh, people mm. taking the certification. And on the other side, I would love to get your point of view on how you think that actually the normal day-to-day of enterprises that uh, you know you know or we have been together uh, you know consulting uh, uh, for mm. um, they they how can their kind of training on the job uh, um, can uh, uh, can help them uh, being getting certified right right so the benefits of the organization and the benefits of the individual correct uh, so for the organization I as we've discussed I think we we have that uh, capacity to measure. Uh, I think that that becomes uh, it, it, an important thing uh, in terms of uh, in terms of management layers within an organization. Um, so if if we if we put training into that as well, um, when I when I go and do training for something that's not certified, uh, which I I often do, um, there's not necessarily uh, an absolute measure on that that the, the measure of whether the training was a success is based on the feedback and the feedback is based on a you know a, a relative feeling that uh, enough of the candidates feel that they've been stretched and they feel that it's valuable and that is that is good that is a good measure to a certain extent but it's not an absolute measure it's not it's not something that you could really tap to a KPI but if you have training that's attached to a examination that has a pass rate uh, and you are able to, with training within that organization, uh, exceed that pass rate, then you know that you're developing um, uh, uh, people within your organization at a level that is above market conditions. So I think that that is very powerful um, dynamic for for growing um, talented teams in organizations um, in terms of for the individual uh, 
you know, <laughs> removing the 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 fact that you you have uh, an accreditation that is um, supported uh, and verified by the OpenJS Foundation and the Linux Foundation, um, you will also be uh, skilling yourself up, even if you feel that you're at a certain level. What we found is a lot of people come to doing these exams and and actually uh, tell us helped us with with the alpha testing and this the feedback we got where where people, people did not realize how many knowledge gaps they had because in your everyday job you don't necessarily come across those knowledge gaps however once you've knowledge it still makes your day job easier because you you find easier routes to doing things because you've you've covered more surface area in terms of the, the problem domain right um so we, we there's benefits all around uh and uh i think something like this has a really compelling uh uh selling point to both people and organizations uh it's it, we've also gotten a lot of good feedback uh from alpha beta uh, testimonials, uh, different things like that, um, saying essentially that this was uh, one of the best exams they've taken con versus others, which um, is excellent. And a lot of the testimonials come back saying, I like how it focuses on real world problems, not not just um, puzzles. Um, so I think that uh, putting it all together, uh, you have something that can essentially elevate both the individual and the organization um, uh, to, to be more successful with, with Node. Um, yeah, I've exhausted that question, I feel. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think uh, to, to your note, uh, um, when we as a Talos Digital agreed uh, uh, on, you know, um, contributing to this uh, fantastic yep. initiative, <laughs> we immediately saw a uh, value in investing into that, right? Um, and like mm. you said, is a way not really to measure with a negative connotation uh, our developers, but is a way to help them finding a path of growth uh, and a path of improvement, uh, especially because, uh, um, like I said, uh, I compare the certification uh, to like, you know, playing golf when you play against yourself, right? It's like, um, it's a is a competition uh, uh, once again it's a healthy competition and i think uh, to mm. add to your previous point uh, uh, about uh, uh, the the physical training right um, there is there is some sort of element uh, uh, in the whole process that resembles uh, you know people going to the gym or people trying to train uh, and improve uh, uh, you know their capabilities and I think that's the beauty of, of this process, right? Is that is a continuous iteration mm. and that's why it's pretty right. valuable. Um, I, I would love to, to ask you um, a little bit, not really your point of view, but uh, uh, almost your point of view uh, on uh, uh, workshop. And I said, I said it in this way because, as you said, it's part also of what uh, you are trying to formulate and uh, uh, something mm. that you're working on. So I was more wondering uh, mm. if you could uh, kind of elaborate a little bit more on how you see uh, workshops and interactions. Now, you, you've, you, what, in your honest opinion, is the best way for everyone uh, to kind of bring that kind of experience within their organizations or their working groups or uh, their communities? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, you've got the self-help uh, in terms of a interactive experience. That's That could be one way that's, that, that certain people that have an affinity with that approach in an organization, uh, they, could, they could use that approach. Then you've got services like Udemy, uh, which is, you know, pre-recorded -pre stuff. Um, and that's fine too, but it's, it's, it's actually just another form of self-learning right um what i'm thinking of is guided learning um where you combine um essentially videos and exercises and trainer presence uh all into one 
one package that's delivered to an organization uh, to, you know, 20 people at a time uh, to in an organization so that everyone gets personal attention. Um, it's more of a masterclass than training, if that makes sense. It's more like a mentoring and coaching using uh, using training materials and using sort of a workshop approach uh, where with exercises and so forth. Um, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't that 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 doesn't just leave you on your own in the dark to kind of battle battle through it. Um, so that's the kind of that's the kind of formula that we're playing with currently, uh, and um, you know hopefully uh, we'll have we'll have more moving forward. But I mean the material is there, the material is ready to go. It's more a case of finding something, and I think we're very close finding something that that. It is suitable uh, for for enterprise organizations and even public offerings as well. Um, there are there are different timelines that you could deliver this on. You could do it all in a week. You could do it over three months. Um, but it, it just depends on on you know both the 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 organization that wants that training and the actual the actual trainer, which would be myself and and possibly others that we'd we'd get involved to do it uh, that are also um similar sort of industry uh industry experts um but whether we go forward on that it kind of depends a lot on on uh, a couple of different factors uh whether there's interest whether the model works all of that kind of stuff however i think i, I am very excited about it i think that it could be something that could uh really help push forward the, the whole digital transformation that a lot of uh large organizations have been you essentially forced to go into so i think that that's a wave that's worth um going along for the ride with yeah and uh, you, we spoke a lot about enterprise and big organizations right so uh let's maybe take uh, the last uh, uh couple of minutes of this uh yeah. very beautiful chat with you to talk about communities right so because clearly know the mm. uh, um it's a very popular uh, framework and technology that are growing massively across communities and yeah. enterprise. But uh, if on one side we saw the benefits of the certification for the enterprise ecosystem, how do yeah. you see the certification impacting uh, uh, the the other side of the medal? That is the more kind of open, yeah. community driven. Uh, Absolutely, the origin of Node. Yeah. So we've all, we've also seen global interest in the certification, um, and from a community side, we have people that contribute to Node who live all over the world, um, not just Node but also the ecosystem. Um, this makes pricing a tricky issue. Um, the certifications themselves are three hundred dollars each, um, but one of the ways in which to uh, sort of access or allow access for the global community is uh, that the foundation are doing regular promotions and there's a lot going on right now with uh, scholarships as well. I think there was actually a, a post recently uh, by the executive director, uh, an update on that. Um, so that's in terms of growing, growing individuals in the community who just are just go getters and they just want to get certified uh, uh, themselves. Um, in terms of the actual benefits that something like this would bring to, say, the open source community, um, the more skilled people that we have uh, and the more we can validate those skills, uh, the better uh, an open source project, uh, open source project uh, will do. Um, so if anything, we want to be able to help people um move into this industry because there's always the tech industry in general is always hungry for more talent um and as a byproduct of that i would expect to see uh, some more open source engagement as well lovely so um how can people uh contribute to that because that's probably the last uh, missing piece of uh, our conversation can people contribute to, uh, the, to the certification? Is uh, there is a way for them to be more engaged and be contributors? Uh? 
Uh, so, for, for, for privacy, for for purposes of having an exam that is difficult to to cheat on, um, the involvement in the certification uh, is is not open, right? Because otherwise, you could just go look up the answers, um, and that's the 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 it, it has been a community initiative uh, f- for a while. Um, at a certain point, it switched to a vendoring arrangement instead. So, um, in order to preserve that privacy, there's not really a way you can contribute to the certification other than taking it and then and then report back, giving feedback, testimonials, and different things like that. Um, however, what you can contribute to is the uh, skilling up of uh, other people for the certification. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, definitely come contact me. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to talk, if anyone wants to talk about any of this other, other stuff we've been talking about, you can hit me on Twitter It's at David Mark Clem. Um, I think I'm going to be there, uh, typing away anyway, when this is, this video is going out. So I'll type it at that point. Um, and if you're uh, interested in the certifications, uh, go on the open JS uh, website uh, and you'll you'll find it from there. Dave, I really thank you a lot for oh. this chat. Oh, you want and the last Linux point? Foundation go, website. Go, go for the last go point, on. Dave. So uh, the other thing was the Linux Foundation website. If you if you want to look up the self help training for uh, Node application developer, again, I'll put it in the links. Lovely. Sorry. Go That's ahead. Fantastic, Dave. I really thank you for this beautiful chat. I hope everyone listening to this talk will find enough information for them to you know, join this trend and uh, try to get certified. And uh, I want to say thank you again and uh, ciao, Dave. Ciao. Ciao.